So we've been very fortunate over the past year to be able to learn a great deal about um, FTD that's new and important. Uh, this kind of information will be very, very helpful in terms of trying to figure out who is uh, eligible for uh, disease-modifying treatment trials, that is, treatment trials that are changing the underlying course of the condition by treating the, the misfolded proteins that are accumulating in the brain. And we've also um, learned a great deal about um, biomarkers that are crucial for being able to see how uh, individuals will respond to a treatment trial. So one important um, uh, biomarker comes from doing a blood test, and blood tests we can get will give us genetic information. And we've um, found that there is a new kind of change on chromosome 9 that is responsible for um, FTD, frontotemporal degeneration, and also responsible for ALS, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, um, Lou Gehrig's disease. And in families where we see both ALS and FTD, as well as individuals who have the combination of those conditions, we've now been able to say that there is a change on chromosome 9 that um, is responsible for this problem. This is um, an important discovery for two reasons. One, because it appears to be the most common um, inherited cause of FTD and um, frontotemporal degeneration spectrum syndromes. And the other reason why is because it's, it describes for us a new mechanism that um, is um, causing these diseases and that will in turn open up the potential for identifying new kinds of treatments. Um, we can also look at the blood for risk alleles. There are um, areas that uh, are represent some risk um, in, uh, in, the, uh, in our genetic uh, material, and we're able to now look at that and see which risk alleles are important for um, uh, indicating that one has uh, either uh, a disease associated with tau or a condition associated with the other common protein that accumulates in the brain, TDP. Um, a second um, advance that um, we've been able to uh, uh, look at over the course of the past year is that there are changes in the cerebral spinal fluid that we find are very, very helpful, particularly for being able to diagnose uh, um, motor neuron disease, or ALS. We now have a, um, a good marker for being able to identify who has the motor features that are associated with frontotemporal um, spectrum disorders. Uh, Another kind of biomarker has to do with imaging, and in imaging studies, we've been able to look at specific parts of the brain and been able to identify which specific parts of the brain are associated with um, TDP or associated with the accumulation of tau. And again, this is very important because it helps us um, uh, uh, figure out who is eligible for which kind of treatment trial that's targeting um, either the TDP or the tau protein that is accumulating in the brain in these conditions. Um, we've also um, learned a great deal about um, the longitudinal course and prognosis of um, uh, conditions like um, FTD, frontotemporal spectrum disorders. Uh, we think that the natural history of, the, of these uh, um, conditions isn't a straight linear decline, but in fact it's curvilinear. So it ends up that the, um, the first half of these conditions, um, individuals are in the mild stages that involve very, very um, subtle and slow progression. Um, we think that um, there are um, important breaks that on this system that keep the condition um, moving forward very, very slowly in the early stages. Um, and we refer to these important modulating factors or breaks on the system as um, uh, cognitive um, and brain reserve. Um, as the, um, uh, these proteins are accumulating in the brain, there are parts of the brain that are able to um, resist the accumulation of these proteins. And um, they, they're able to compensate by providing alternate cognitive strategies in order to be able to um, accomplish the same means, same goal, I should say, um, through a different means. There are also important um, uh, uh, forms of brain organization that we can um, uh, uh, we can identify that we think are important factors that um, contribute to cognitive reserve. Um, however, as the, um, uh, uh, these proteins accumulate in the brain, we do uh, see progression from the mild to the moderate stages of the condition. And we've investigated the biological basis for this progression by looking at transmission of proteins from one brain cell to another brain cell. 
So uh, uh, colleagues at University of Pennsylvania are performing seminal work at demonstrating how uh, uh, these conditions progress over time. And again, this lays open a new potential avenue for treatment. So we can try to interrupt the transmission of these misfolded proteins from one brain cell to the next brain cell. So we've learned a great deal over the past year um, about FTD and related conditions, and we're really very pleased to be able to present this. Um, a lot of this work is um, uh, available on our website uh, that we've um, just gone live with. The website is um, ftd.med.upenn.edu, and we welcome your, um, uh, your visits and your comments. Thanks.